In 2017, astronomers discovered the first interstellar object, an asteroid called Oumuamua that followed a hyperbolic path around the Sun. The fact that it followed this hyperbolic path tells us that it came from outside of the solar system, because if it were part of the solar system and the Sun's domain, it would have followed a circular or elliptical orbit. So we know that it came from outside of the solar system and came from another star system, which is incredibly exciting. But this was discovered in 2017, so why is it such big news now? Well, it all comes down to a Harvard professor, Avi Loeb, and his recent book, where he discusses a Oumuamua and claims that it's an alien spacecraft sent to the solar system. I thought it might be interesting to give my thoughts on this, but I didn't want to spend too much time on it, so there might be more jump cuts than usual. So, sorry in advance. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about the actual science and claims in this video, because there is a much better video than what I could make on the YouTube channel Call Worlds, which goes into detail of each of the claims and the scientific rebuttal for each of those claims. Instead, I want to talk about the approach that Avi Loeb has taken and what it means for science, and in general, the complaints he has for science now that he's aired in his recent interviews. But the nuts and bolts of this argument go as follows. Um, Oumuamua has a really strange shape. We could deduce that from observations. It has a 6 to 1 aspect ratio, meaning its shape is either an elongated cigar-like object or a very flat pancake-like object, or in Avi's case, a solar sail. But the main thing is that the object sped up as it left the solar system. Now, Avi claims that this is evidence that it was indeed a solar sail being pushed by the photon pressure of the sun but there are scientific explanations for both the shape and the speed up as it left the solar system. The shape argument comes down to the object may have been stretched and distorted through time as it either traveled interstellar space or by its own star before it got kicked out into interstellar space. The other problem of a Oumuamua speeding up as it left the solar system isn't necessarily a big issue either. We have explanations for how this could occur. In the case of comets, they can speed up as they go around the sun because volatile components around and in the comet can eject from the comet and give it a little push, like a jet pushing it along. A Muamua could have very well done the same thing. Volatile components beneath the surface of a Muamua ejecting out as they get heated up by the sun, pushing a Muamua faster and faster along its orbit. Now you would expect to see some cometary trail, perhaps, if this were the case, and we didn't see it in any of our observations. But this doesn't necessarily rule out the ejecting material as a reasonable hypothesis. Because we've seen objects in the solar system that do something similar to perhaps what Oumuamua did. As they heat up, they eject large objects which can't be seen by optical telescopes. So the fact that we couldn't see material ejected from Oumuamua in optical telescopes isn't a problem, because we have analogs in the solar system that do exactly that, so no need for aliens there. Now to achieve the acceleration that Oumuamua had, it needed to eject at about a kilogram of material every second, which is a lot, but not an unreasonable amount of material. So you can see that there is a scientific explanation for this strange phenomena. Now the reason there is a scientific explanation for these phenomena is because the problem of a Oumuamua has been battled out in the scientific journals. People have analyzed the data, they've produced theories of what this data could mean, and they've tested it on models and with other bits of evidence, like the other objects within our solar system. And this is the way science works. Behind closed doors, people argue and find a solution that fits all of the evidence. That is how science works. But what Avi Loeb seems to have done is after his theory of a solar sail powering a Oumuamua was largely rejected by the astronomical community because it didn't answer some questions and just kind of seemed quite unrealistic. He seems to have abandoned the formal scientific process and now has taken up a scientific process of science by public opinion. Now, in my opinion, this is no longer science. Because you're not trying to convince experts in the field based on your model and your evidence. 
but you're just trying to convince the greater public that your model is correct based off your cherry-picked arguments, not the entire picture. So I don't really have much respect for this kind of science because it just isn't science anymore. But this idea of debating science publicly is certainly an interesting one and it's not something that hasn't been done before. Perhaps the most famous case is the uh, argument of if the universe is static or if it's changing over time. This was a very big argument at the time and uh, we have all heard of the Big Bang model. It was originally coined on radio as an insult to the Big Bang model, but it was so catchy it just kind of stuck. So these public debates aren't uncommon in science, especially astronomy. But the fact that it's seemingly diverted entirely out of a scientific discourse into now a popular science book arguing one thing and all of science arguing the other, it seems to have strayed more into the realms of pseudoscience from my perspective. In recent interviews, Avi has made lots of generalized claims about scientists, mainly stemming around the idea that scientists are uh, media-driven creatures now. Which is kind of ironic coming from him, who is boasting in many articles about how many media appearances he gets. Um, but it's, it's just simply not true. As someone who's had a press release about the work I've done, it wasn't the goal of me doing that work. I didn't set out on doing work so that I would get a fancy press release. What happened was the work I'd done led to something interesting. People thought it was interesting, so we thought maybe let's do write a press release on it and see where it goes. It was very exciting and I was certainly happy to be part of it and happy to see lots of people seeing my work. But it wasn't the sole motive for my research and I think this is true for pretty much every scientist. We're not motivated by press releases, we're motivated by trying to understand the universe. And I think this may in fact be a little bit of projection from Avi onto the science community there. And in one particular interview on the Scientific American, which I'll put a link to in the description, there's a one pretty ironic line uh, from Avi where he says, People are not only motivated by the wrong reasons, they're also no longer guided by evidence. Evidence keeps you modest because you predict something, you test it, and the evidence sometimes shows that you're wrong. And in this case, it seems um, pretty self-reflective in some ways because the evidence seems to suggest that a Muamua was a natural formation. And perhaps Avi is no longer guided by evidence, but perhaps by the things that he says other scientists are guided by. In this article in the Scientific American, he seems um, quite against string theorists um, because they haven't really produced too much testable predictions in recent times. Which is um, disappointing, I'll admit. I'm uh, always wanting to see string theory make some big breakthrough. But the fact that it hasn't doesn't mean it's non-scientific. It's scientific in the terms that pure mathematics is scientific. Although it hasn't made any physical breakthroughs, it's made numerous mathematical breakthroughs, which are perhaps, in many ways, more useful than the stuff that I do. But the fact that string theory hasn't made any testable predictions doesn't mean that you can just say aliens are the solution to strange problems that appear in the universe. That is just bad science. Another point in the Scientific American article, Avi says, People ask why I get this media attention. The only reason is because my colleagues are not using common sense. Hmm. Strange that RV seems to be the only one in the scientific community that can use common sense. Um, perhaps it might just be that RV has uh, gone down the path of making outrageous claims which get a lot of attention. Like claiming alien spaceships have visited the solar system when it seems more likely that it was just an asteroid from another star. And there was a pretty interesting article recently called The Uncensored Guide to a Muamua, Aliens and That Harvard Astronomer, written by Ethan Segal um, on the Starts With a Bang blog, where he contradicts Avi's claims that he's not in it for press by uh, telling us that Ethan had received numerous unsolicited emails from Avi and his postdocs uh, about this trying to get media attention. So clearly things aren't necessarily as they're claimed. 
Now, I'm not going to say there aren't crises in science. There are numerous crises in science. To name a few, we have things like a reproducibility crisis, um, the journal crisis, how we're being effectively robbed and held ransom by um, big journals like Nature. And there's representation crises in science, there's funding crises, all of these different crises. And the biggest one by far is the job crises. There are far more scientists than there are positions to fill. So the majority of scientists can't do the job that they're trained so many years to do. All of these are valid crises. What isn't a crisis is astronomers not appreciating the idea of aliens so much. Because there are programs in astronomy that are dedicated to look for aliens. The SETI program, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. So the claim that Avi makes that we're not even attempting to entertain the idea that aliens exist is just flat wrong. There are programs around searching for aliens at the moment. Does it have enough funding to do a full-scale search? Probably not. But does astronomy have enough funding to do all the science it needs? Does all of science have enough funding to do the research that's needed to help us progress? That's definitely not the case. We just need to take things as they come. And if there is indeed such a big public interest as Avi claims in understanding if we're alone in the universe, then the public funds should reflect that. There should be more funds allocated by governments towards the SETI programs. So this isn't really a statement about scientists are bad and not acknowledging aliens. It's a statement about there's just limited funds and limited allocation of funds. I think the only people that aren't too happy about the SETI programs are the radio astronomers who now have to share their telescopes with these big programs that just look at a bunch of stars trying to find a signal. But even then, they're not upset about the programs because these programs do bring in a lot of money, especially the Breakthrough Listen program that keep these radio telescopes alive. So a lot of these claims around the way science is structured at the moment, I just don't believe. I don't think that they're two big challenges. There are programs searching for aliens. We do take the idea of aliens credible and seriously. Uh, it's just that we haven't found evidence so far to support the idea that aliens are out there. I certainly would love to see aliens being discovered in the very near future. I think it will change humanity for the better if we do discover that we're not alone in the universe. And as for the crisis of scientists apparently only being motivated for fame and prestige, uh, it's certainly a case that fame and prestige are very useful in science and very helpful. They help you get more funding, they help you expand your influence in your research group. Uh, but it's not the problem. The problem is the crisis of representation and things like that, where groups in marginalized communities don't have the uh, same level of prestige as groups in more well-off communities. So they can't reach the same levels as the other competitors. So that is a fair crisis. As I said before, there are many crises at the heart of science, but the idea that we're not giving aliens enough airtime is certainly not a crisis I think is exists. So those were my thoughts on the Amor Mora is an alien spaceship idea proposed by Avi Loeb and his more general concerns about the broader scientific community. I don't think the evidence lines up with his claims, and I don't think it will in the future as we learn more about how things like a Muamua could form and discover similar objects to a Muamua going forward with new observatories like the Vera Rubin Observatory. But what are your thoughts on this situation? Do you think that the evidence is in favor of the solar sail, or is it mainly just hope that gives Avi Loeb this drive to try and see it through to the end? And what about this idea of doing science through public consensus? Is it the way that science will be headed in the future? Or is it something that will only be kind of seen on the fringes of science that kind of skirts towards pseudoscience? I'm interested to see your thoughts, so let me know in the comments. And I've put a link to the articles I've mentioned in this video, as well as the paper written by the Oumuamua collaboration, which covers a lot of the points that Avi Loeb raises and refutes them pretty nicely, in my opinion. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.